Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and today we're continuing our series on assembling your Wire EDM starter kit. In this video, we're going to finish assembly of the wire tool and complete onboard wiring. From here, we're going to move on to the motor mount and the motor spool. So for this, we're going to need our motor housing, the two halves of the waste spool, the motor cover, our motor, and some M3 fasteners. The first step is to take your motor and install it into the motor housing. This is gonna require a bit of flexing of these walls, but they're designed to do that, so don't worry if they bend a little bit during the process. What I do is I take the motor and I place it in here, and then we can slide it down, making sure we keep the wires out of that spot, and we angle the motor a little bit back like that, so it can come through this opening on the front side of the motor housing. We can then press it down and slide it forward until it falls into those bosses here. Now the whole thing can actually get installed onto the back side of the endoskeleton, just like that. Now we take our M3 fasteners. These are M3 by eight. It's important during this step to use something like Loctite or super glue or some other adhesive because we don't have a whole lot of thread engagement available on the motor itself. Adding that little bit of Loctite is gonna be really helpful for retaining these screws because we can't put that much torque on them during this process. Now that we've put Loctite on our screws, we'll take our motor housing and motor, and I push it forward here, pinching it between my thumb and four fingers. And then place in our fastener and then apply torque with our Allen key. Installation torque on these screws should be pretty light. We want to avoid trying to strip out the actual threads that we have in the sink bosses down below on the motor faceplate. Now that we've installed the M3 by eight fasteners, we can move on to the installation of the waste spool. You can see the square recess on this half and the square peg here. Let's go together and then we take the D-shaped recess here and we match it to the D-shape on the shaft. So if you want, you could do this in two parts. Press that on, and then match that up there on top. We'll then take the M3 by 16 countersunk, and install that in there. Now that the motor and the spool are both installed, we can move on to the last portion of the motor assembly. We need one M4 by 16 countersunk screw, and we're actually gonna place that into this hole of the motor mount. It can help to pull the wires aside to get this done. That's going to screw into the threaded insert on the print on the other side. This is gonna to help to maintain alignment of the tensioner body itself. Now we can just install our motor cover into the V-groove on the back of this and it just snap into place. Now we've installed the motor and the waste spool assembly. Next step is gonna be installation of the tool mount onto the tool itself. This only requires a couple fasteners and then we'll install some hardware into the actual tool mount. So this part uses the M4 by 16 countersunk cap screws. And we can install those into the tool mount like so. Then place the tool mount into a position and we can start actually screwing in these screws. Now that we've installed the tool mount, we can put Wagos in these slots here. These are the 221-412 Wagos included with the kit. These just snap fit into these recesses here. Press it into place. Now you can take these out if you ever need to switch any of the wiring, but these should be well retained in the actual snap fit here. And there we go. Now we can move on to on-tool wiring. For this part, you might want something like this wire stripper that we have, or you could use a pair of pliers or just a sharp knife to carefully take the insulation off the end of these wires. These wires are shipped with the insulation still intact in order to prevent any damage to the end of those conductors. Just be careful during the stripping process that you don't remove conductor from the wire core. For these Wagos, I'm going to strip to 11 millimeters, and the motor cables go into these two Wagos down here. These can later get routed off of the tool to your motor controller or power supply. 
The next portion that we're going to cover is the grounding wire. The grounding wire goes to the endoskeleton right here. It's important to ground the endoskeleton because we don't actually want this to turn into an antenna for the high voltage pulses. So for this process, we're going to use the grounding screw as well as the grounding wire included with the kit. We can strip this wire and we'll install our grounding screw through there. Place it over the hole and apply light torque as you find that hole. And as you go through, you can actually check to see if you're applying enough torque. You can see here, I'm not applying enough torque yet because I can still move that wire. I'm not making good electrical contact with that ground. We'll check again. Still needs a little bit more. Maybe helpful during this part to back out the screw and then send it back in again. If you do that several times, you'll help to kind of go through those threads and work your way through the metal. And checking again, looks like I actually do have enough torque this time around. So now we can take this wire and connect it into this Wago. As the final step for onboard wiring of the wire tool itself, we're gonna install the tungsten carbide block down at the bottom portion of the endoskeleton here. Now might be a good time to start preheating your hot glue and you can find your tungsten carbide blocks, your M6 fastener, and the M6 nylock included with the kit. You can see here that we've included two tungsten carbide blocks. These are wear components. Each block has four of these convex profiles on it. So each block itself has four wear surfaces that you can work with. You might rotate the block and reinstall your components or even switch out to the new one that's included with the kit. We'll also need our cathode wire. This is what actually connects the tungsten carbide block into the EDM circuit. The two 3D printed components you're going to need will be the electrically isolating boss. And then the other part you're gonna want is this fastener cap. So I'll take my tungsten carbide block and I'll take my fastener and we'll just nest those together like so. We can then place them through the front side of the endoskeleton. Retaining those, we'll flip it over to the back side and install our fastener boss here. This should nest within the endoskeleton. Now that it's sitting flush, we'll take our cathode wire Place that down on top, and then we can install our nylock. Just a light installation first will work. Before we actually torque this down, it's probably a good idea to take your cathode wire and route it through the included wire routing here on the back side of the tool up to your Wago bus here. Or as another option, what we're gonna do today is route it down through here. This is gonna allow us a shorter electrical path from the wire tool itself to the twisted cables that provide power for the EDM setup. This is gonna reduce EMI for our EDM process. With my wire routed down through the bottom here, now I can torque down this nylock. So for torquing this down, you could use some pliers like I'm gonna be using today. So long as enough force is applied to create good electrical contact, that's gonna be acceptable. This is one of the most robust portions of the system because we're just clamping something onto aluminum. So don't be afraid to get it nice and snug. I'll grab that nylock and then start torquing down on the fastener itself. You can see that the tungsten carbide block is actually supported by the 3D print here. If there's a little bit of rotation in your assembly, that's okay. The tungsten carbide block has a convex surface here and the wire path is designed to actually intersect with the block. That means that in practice, the wire is going to be pushed to one side and that's what's going to give us that good electrical contact under tension. And now that I've torqued that down significantly, we're gonna move over to the potting step. So we'll make sure that our wire is still routed in the correct spot there. And then we can just take our hot glue and fill in this recess. The potting will help for strain relief and it'll also keep the circuit from corroding. The wire tool itself is gonna be submerged in water for quite some time during the machining process. And it's not exactly clean water, it's gonna have a lot of metal waste and debris in there. And you can see I even took the hot glue over to this side here. And that's not strictly necessary, but again, it might be helpful. After giving this a few minutes to cool, we'll move on to the front side where we can apply our fastener cap. This part will fit right over top of the fastener head there. And again, this is to prevent any collisions that might join that circuit to something unwanted. So for what we're doing, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of hot glue to this. It doesn't need to be a lot. And we can just smush that on there. This portion's not structural and it's not gonna see any loads. So 
doing that is going to be perfectly acceptable for retaining that part. With motor installation and on-tool wiring completed, we're going to move on to VAT assembly and waterproofing in the next video. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out at the Discord link below. Our team and many others are there and we're ready to help you troubleshoot.